comparing organic fertilizers to synthetic fertilizers, folks. That's what we're talking about right here. And I'm going to start with our black grid. Have a look at this. This is our black grid. For those who don't know what it is, it's a natural rock phosphate, calcium silicate magnesium. It will adjust the pH in your soil so it neutralizes it. Why? Because along the east coast of Australia, predominantly, it's full of nitrogen. That's our soil, folks. A few areas, a little bit alkaline, but most of it are full of nitrogen. Many reasons for that comes from the sky because we also add what we've been trained to add, synthetic fertilizers. What am I talking about? It's the stuff that look like little balls. Have a look at this one here. Look at all these little balls. Now, you recognize this? This is what we call phosphate. Now, ask yourself the question, have you ever heard people say to you, do not use phosphate in your garden, especially around natives and other phosphate sensitive plants? Have you asked yourself why? Have you ever tried black grit around it? I'll tell you what I've done. I've put a couple of shovels around my Malaluca trees, tea trees, which should have, by the scientific research, killed them. They're not dead, they're actually green. They're greener than they've ever been before. And I'll tell you why in a second, but let's go back to this one here. How on earth is this made? Does anybody know? Well, look folks, a disclaimer here, I'm no scientist, I'm just a humble gardener, loves my garden and nature and everything around me, and I try to keep it natural as possible and share whatever knowledge I've learned from traveling far and wide around Australia and other countries, as well as talking to a lot of experts and colleagues who are in the science world. Now, let's talk about phosphate. How is phosphate made? Natural forming rock phosphate is, by natural nature, non-soluble. Okay, this is a non-soluble phosphate. This once upon a time was non-soluble as well because it all starts from nature until we started tampering with it. Now let me take you back a few decades. Once upon a time there was a war and during that war there was a company that made lots of chemicals and those chemicals were used to create what? Bombs and other nasty devices and uses for them. Now once the war did finish we were left with a company that had no use or purpose for their chemicals anymore. And some bright spark came up with the idea of NPK. Now NPK is what we recognize as your typical fertilizer package where you see N being the nitrogen, P being the phosphorus, and K being the potassium. Now a combination of these playing around with those percentages on either three gave them an idea of applying it to the garden and seeing plants growing. In the short, that was a great research and development for feeding plants. But in the long term, as we started to evolve and learn more about it and research more about it, we came to realize that the more you tamper with nature, the worse it'll become, especially when you think you can control it. Now by applying a fertilizer like this, which I'll explain to you how it's made shortly, over time, we're toxifying the soil. We're killing the life in the soil, the microbes, the bacteria, the fungi, and so on. And eventually, plants become reliant on artificially being fertilized, synthetically fertilized. Do you know what I'm talking about yet? Well, let me explain how this is made to give you a bit of better idea of what's going on. Black grit, phosphate base, calcium, added to your garden will dissolve. Add water, come down here, have a look at this. Add water. All right, we'll just sit there and let it soak for a while while we continue our top topic. Now this one here is a soluble phosphate. Let's add water to it. And we'll continue our little conversation while this does its little magic. The magic is to make phosphate soluble, you've got to add another chemical to it. And the chemical found to be used is sulfuric acid. So your rock phosphate, which won't dissolve blast it with sulfuric acid makes it a soluble form. Then they reform it into these little balls which look fantastic because they're all little different sizes and they say put it in your garden but don't use it around natives and other plants that are sensitive. Well it's not so much the phosphate that's going to be sensitive, yes they don't like it, but remember this, the earth is full of phosphate, some areas a lot more than others, very little amounts over here, a lot more over there, yet you'll find some indigenous and native plants growing in it. I've used phosphate, which is our black grid, on our native trees and they haven't flicked a lid or eyelid or moved or gone backwards in any form. They've actually improved. Now, again, always practice caution. I'm no scientist. This is my little humble research that I've done over the years on the product. Whereas if you use a soluble phosphate, a, it dissolves really quick, B, it leaches out into your waterways, it goes into the, the streams, it goes into other areas, it starts to poison our streams, our wildlife, our animals, they're taking it up. It's not the phosphate, it's the sulfuric acid that's in it. 
it's not good for you in any way which way you look at it. That's why they say put very little amounts, a teaspoon around the whole square metre. Why? Why are we going down that path? So the companies who created this product try to find another purpose, repurpose the chemicals, turn them into a fertiliser. The same stuff that once upon a time, correct me if I'm wrong, were made for bombs. What? Really? The same stuff that we used once to create bombs for wars, we are now using them to create life in our soil and feed our plants? Are you serious? Really, are you serious? I'm no expert, I'm no scientist, I'm just a humble gardener. I've spoken to my scientific friends who told me, don't put phosphate black grit around your natives yet. Look at them, they're thriving. You can take a shot afterwards, buddy. Whereas if I put the, the soluble phosphate, yes, I get it. It'll actually cook them, it'll burn them. Excessive exposure of phosphate, or should we say sulfuric acid, will cause a lot of harm, if not destruction, to your garden and life. So we've got to stop that, folks. We've really got to open our eyes and start thinking about the way we feed our gardens. We understand there is life in the soil and that's where it all starts from and that's where it all ends. We destroy it, well, not soon after that, we'll be going with it too. Well, soon after that, I should say. Come down here and let's have a look what's going on. Black grit, has it dissolved? No, it's still there, water's still pretty clear. Have a look at the water there. Have a look at this cloudy stuff. Look at that, that is dissolving. What are we doing there? This, in the 30 seconds or a minute and a half that I've been speaking, maybe more than that, is being destructive. It's actually leaching out and running into our waterways. Our plants will take this up instantly and kill them. Over time, overexposure, it will eventually cook your plants. We say, we use the expression salt. Too much salt in the soil. No, too much sulfuric acid in the soil and phosphate combined with that. Black grit only dissolves when it comes in contact with soil that's acidic. So the microbes that are feeding, or the acidic making microbes, will feed off this and reduce it down, will cause them to reduce down and become neutralized, which means it unlocks all the other vital elements and nutrients in the soil that otherwise become unavailable to your plants in a safe and a respectful way. They, it, black grit respects your soil, as you should be respecting it. Whereas the synthetic form of fertilizers, folks, really, I know there's a lot of companies out there, and some of you might be watching me now, know me very well, and probably biting your tongue and pulling your hair out as far as what I'm saying, not my problem. You've been doing it a long time, and it's about time we started speaking the truth about what's going on. And if you don't know what's going on, and you're manufacturing and selling a product, get your information organized. And if I'm wrong, please, please, please email me. Please let me know, correct me. I'm here to learn as well. Not only act like I think I know what I'm talking about, I'm only sharing what I have researched, what I have discovered through talking and experiencing with other people alike and colleagues and obviously scientists as well. So if you're gonna feed your garden, it's like when I say spraying your garden with an insecticide. If you can't get it out of your kitchen pantry, you shouldn't be applying it into your garden. Now, you're not going to find a, a bag of cow when you're in your kitchen pantry, but you're going to find it at the back end of a cow uh, or an animal or your plant life. So if you can't compost it yourself, if you can't get it from an animal that's been um, you know, treated well, it hasn't been treated with a lot of chemicals and things like that, they're the sort of things you want to be using in your garden, making your own compost. You want to talk about black grit as a palletized form? Well, I'm thinking about trying to do it. We actually did try, but the hardness material of this rock is so much higher in hardness than the material that the steel is made from for the palletizing machine, it destroyed the machine. So there isn't a metal hard enough, well there are, but it's just too expensive. So you don't need it as a pallet form. Superfood uh, super on the other on the other form is made by natural food waste, unprocessed vegetables and foods and things like that that are ground down to a frass like form by a soldier fly larvae. And then we palletize that, that's all we do. We palletize the same superfood frass into a pallet form so it becomes a slow release for your garden. Exactly the way the other stuff works, but slower in releasing into it. So if you're gonna feed your garden, yes, compost, yes, add your organic matter, make your own if you like. Get something from a company that's certified or guarantees you there's no chemicals or sulfuric acid in it and put some black grit into it. That's all you need to do. Have a look at it here. It will not dissolve in water, only when it comes into contact with your soil when it's too acidic with the microbes. It will balance it out and unlock the magic in your garden. Come over here, have a look at this. Have a look at this. I haven't agitated this. And what we see there is all the impurities that are used to make your super phosphate synthetic form. 
It's full of chemicals, folks. All I could say is stay right away from it. So if you're gonna feed your garden, feed it naturally, the way you wanna eat, clean, fresh, organically, so you can stay strong and healthy. That's all we wanna do here. Keep it simple. Grow something in your garden. The other part, where the hell did the lead come from in our eggs, by the way? I'm really confused on that one there because is anybody out there pouring lead paint into their garden or shoveling lead into it? No, I don't think so. So think about all this that you're hearing on the news and everywhere else. There's a lot of stuff going out there that just doesn't make quite sense there for me. But at the end of the day, if you keep a simple stupid for your garden and organic clean, you'll be a lot healthier and a lot happier. So if you're looking for something natural and organic, check out our website, vasiliesgarden.com. Better prices every day for you to enjoy. From me, Vasily, Marissi.